Today we're going to learn how to set up my SQL and load the example data sets that we'll use in all of the subsequent lessons. Start by installing MySQL. If you haven't done that, go to the MySQL website and download the community version of MySQL that's appropriate for your operating system. Next, you'll need to download the example data set called studentdata.sql. You can download that from my website shown here. We're going to create the database and load the data. The way that we're going to do this is the same regardless of what operating system you use. But to get to the critical prompt that we need to see. On, If you're using a Mac, we're going to open a terminal. If you're using Linux, we're going to open a shell. And if you're using Windows, you're going to open a command prompt. To do that, click on the Start menu and under the search box, type Command Prompt. And you'll see a little command prompt with a C colon backslash appear in it. Once you get there, navigate to the location where you downloaded the studentdata.sql file. I put mine on my desktop. And we're going to run this command. MySQL minus U username, whatever your username is for your database, minus P, and then a less than sign and the studentdata.sql. If you haven't created any users other than the one that was prompted during the installation process, your username is likely to be root. I encourage you to learn how to create some new users for your database and don't use root access to do general work on the database. Depending on your operating system, the SQL file may have had .txt appended to the name. You should be able to see that by doing ls or dir, depending on what operating system you're on. What this command does is it takes the contents of that file and it pipes it into MySQL. You should go ahead and look at that file in a text editor. You'll see that there's a bunch of SQL commands in there that create the tables that we'd want and load in the data that we need. The command that I ran is MySQL minus U R Edwards, that's my username, minus P, and then I piped in student data. The minus P says I'm going to use a password and then MySQL prompts you for the password. Hopefully nothing happens, you won't see anything, you'll just get a new prompt back, and that tells you the data's been loaded. Now we're going to access MySQL, and so you can type MySQL minus U, your username, minus P, just like before. My username's R Edwards, MySQL, minus U R Edwards, minus P. I enter my password and I learn some things about MySQL, what version I'm running, um, and of course that it's owned by Oracle. If you're using Windows, you can also navigate to the Start menu and click on the MySQL 5.5 command line client. This will immediately prompt you for your password presumably your root password, and we'll start into MySQL in the same way. The first two commands we're going to use are use student data, that's our database we've just loaded, and show tables. Show tables tells us the tables that we have with students, and there are three 
tables with the student data grade, instructor and student. The data is shown on these next set of slides and if you don't want to download my SQL file you can create these tables yourself. They're very simple. The largest table has six rows, the smallest table has three rows. We have a table called student. It has three columns, an ID, a name, and a year, and just three entries. Our second table is a grade table. It has an ID, a class, a score, and a year. The ID is the same ID as the student. The class is just some classes and some years that the classes were taught and the score is the score that that student got in that class. And our third and final table is an instructor table which has the names of in some instructors and the classes and years that they taught those classes. For these three tables the ID from student and the ID column from grade are related to each other and the class and the year from grade and the class and the year from instructor are related to each other. And in subsequent classes we'll use those for things like joins and selects and so on and so forth. So this really short tutorial was just so that you could download my SQL and that you could load the data. Take the rest of the classes. Good luck.